This is Eagle 7 Sports Radio. 90 minutes with Mathematica, but I'll be spending the next 60 minutes with the great one himself. My brother, my friend, uh, we played briefly together. I got him to come to Ibadan once to stay in my house briefly. I wanted him to play for shooting stars. The man came and then he ran away. He ran away, ran, ran back to Bendel Insurance to go and play for that Bush team in Edo State. Anyway, um, if Austin is there, let us hear your voice. Good morning, Cerezo. Ah, well, very technical issues. Good morning, boss. Good morning, Aha, I can hear you we, can, professor. we can hear your voice. We can see your picture. Here in Wasimi, for some reason, we always have these technical issues, Wi-Fi problem. You know, that's what we have to live with. But we will try our best. I can see you are looking good, relaxed, like, uh, <laughs> <laughs> like all other Nigerians. That's what we went through two days ago. We were so relaxed that even when we were down by one goal, Nigerians were not panicking. They were just, uh, we had qualified and so on. But you see, that mood was not like that several months ago when you took over. There was apprehension everywhere. There was controversy and debates everywhere. But now we are on the driving seat. We were comfortable. Even where we were losing, we were still comfortable. So just tell us briefly how that miracle happened. This transformation of the Super Eagles from where we were to where we are now. Your story with the Super Eagles so far, Austin. Did you hear me? Yes, I'm hearing you, sir. Fantastic. So, go on. Super Eagles now. They are comfortable. We are comfortable, all Nigerians. How did the miracle happen? Thank you very much, uh, Big Chef, for having me. Yes, I've heard you talking about me coming to Shooting Stars. Of course, Shooting Stars <laughs> is dear to my heart. Every Nigerian thing is dear to my heart. And again, you know, Ben Insurance brought me to Limelight anyway. Well, I'm a fan of every Nigerian team. That aside, um, thanks for No, but that is morning. politics, so that is polity. You are just being political. <laughs> no, no, because no, when no, I no. brought you to when I brought you to shooting stars, come, we were number one in yes, the country. Sir. And I wanted the number one center half in Nigeria to come and join that team. And you came, and you and I we spoke well, we were happy, and then you went back to Bush Very true. Bush Bendel Insurance. And then <laughs> what are you telling me, my friend? No, uh, uh, Big Shake, you know, insurance <laughs> brought me to limelight to start with, like I said. Shooting Stars, the team I followed as ball boys, 78, 79, when you guys used to come to Benin. Uh, I remember watching a league game. It rained, and your boys scored the winning goal on that day. And late best was in goal. Late Modashiro Lawa was something. You tried to pass Kadri Khan a few times. It didn't work. I was on that side. The man was kicking me anyhow. You say it didn't, didn't work. Kick you. The man was kicking me anyhow. A bicycle kick. You, know, you <laughs> did some trick. The trick. Yeah, you can remember. He did one trick. Flipped the ball over Ikana. And he turned and then bicycle. Then since that day, it registered in my mind. You know, my mind. But however, that's aside. Um, yeah, some super egos on the driving seat. Everybody's very happy. But we're not going to relax. We're going to keep. Uh, we're not going to take our foot off the pedal. Again, a lot of, a lot of, a lot of. Um, um, I would say a big thank you to to the boys, because uh, when I came in, and the way they welcome me back, as part of the team, being part of the team before now, they respect the show, discipline they showed also was. I know Big Share was was over the moon, and again the confidence also the NFL leadership gave me. I know we spoke a few times before the first game against Benner, you know, made me relax and told me they're going to be in support of me 100%. And then uh, the backroom staff also. So it's been a, a successful journey. And first thing first, uh, the, the way I operate Big Shake is that I, I, I don't monitor people. I, I give people freedom but re responsibility. So you are responsible for your own action. That was the same thing I did when we went to Cameroon in the uh, Nations Cup before the last one. Uh, I'm not somebody who wants to, you know, you give me respect, I, I, re I, I give respect as well. So when you respect people, I think they will also, uh, you know, pay back because it's reciprocal. Now we started the game 
first game at home against Bene, 3-0. Uh, it was a hard battle. Yes, 3-0. And that the goal didn't come, come early enough because sooner or later we know the goal will come because we are capable. We have the potentials. We have world-class players. And then shortly after that, we went to Rwanda. Cut long story short, like you asked, the last game against um, Benin in Ivory Coast now, uh, it was a tough one, was expected. When the news came that we have qualified, but I told our boys, you know, I said, listen, guys, yes, we have a standard to maintain. Remember, anything that plays against the Nigerian national team at any level, any category, they raise their game. So we have to stay with two feet on the ground and make sure we come out with something here. And we agreed. And um, yeah, against the run of play, uh, we conceded, but sooner or later, I knew we were going to come up, but we had to pray for luck as well. But Ben, I give it to them as well. They had a couple of chances. They should have increased the tally, but we're lucky. And then at the end of the day, we came up with that result. Good assist from Moses and fantastic goal from our, our superstar at the moment, um, Victor Sine. Okay. What have you, you have been with the Super Eagles for a long time. What have you learned? about the Eagles that you are doing differently now from before. You know, you, you, you were there as technical director with Gennard Raw, you were there technical director with uh, 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 Pazero, you, you, you handled the team a little, now you're handling the team again. Is there something new and different that you are doing to this present team that makes them look a little bit more composed, more organized, but they still do not have that creativity in front of goal. But the team is a lot better than before. What have you learned? What are you doing differently? It's about you know, uh, collective effort. You know, in the game of football, and um, we, when we plan our event, the strength of our opponent, it's not that we don't have weakness. Everybody's got strength and weaknesses anyway. And then we will discuss uh, because when we operate, we operate individually, line and, and collectively. And because of the respect I think I showed to them, and then they showed to me as well. And again, the first thing first is Nigeria. Because I've uh, discussed with the players a couple of times, you know, when you play at national team level, the market value goes up. And they agree with me, and they know that. I don't have to tell them. It's it's common sense. And your market value goes up, it puts you up there. And you remember, uh, I, I don't want to say we're going through hard times. Yes, permit me to say that things are a little bit tough now on us as Nigerians, but I see future. Uh, uh, very, very, very soon, because it's it's tough. It's tough economically in the entire world, but our own here, it's it's a bit of uh, intense. And the only thing right now that puts smiles on the faces of our people is this round of our game, football. And I won't stop repeating it, because I tell them, I remind them every now and then, big shake, boss. Um, a lot of times, it's not I cannot afford a haircut, a thousand naira, five, one thousand naira, depends on where I go to court. I have a very simple person. Sometimes I go to a barber shop where I have to pay one thousand naira. And somebody out uh, there says, no, I'm going to pay for you. Why? Because, <laughs> because of the game, because of the joy I brought to Nigerian people's uh, faces in the past. And um, I, I, I told them, listen, that's the same thing. You put smiles on people's face. Nigerians love football. Now, if we keep winning and you keep doing well, it takes away that pain. You know, it's only uh, for that moment, but we have to sustain it. We have to sustain it. And it brings it brings a lot of business to a lot of organizations also when you qualify for major tournaments. I have family to look after, so you also have family to look after. There are people out there that can afford three square meals, sometimes two, but they, they find their way to the stadium and glue to TV sets to, to see when Nigeria is playing at any level. When Nigeria wins, 
everybody is happy. I said, please, I beg in the name of God, let us try to keep that smile. Put that smile in your face. How do we do this? By keep winning. One thing that a lot of people, you know, say about the super egos now, you know, I went to a video center, to a viewing center to watch this last match. Eva is my own viewing center in the garden. And people were just, you know, complaining. You know, everybody is a coach in Nigeria, you know, and they were going through the players, you know, your choice of players. They said there are some players that are not regular in their team. You know, they were invited to come and play. There are some that are, you know, never scored a goal before and they are here now. All manner of things. So just give us an idea of what it takes for you to select the players that you select to come and play from match to match. What is that process? How do you scout, monitor, do all of those things and then get the final team so that people's minds will be at rest to know that at any point in time, your choice of players is a reflection of the best that Nigeria can put on ground at that time. Just take us through that little process. Thank you very much, Big Sheikh. I think this is a very good issue. It's a good one. We have to talk about this. You know, we have players all over the world, even including in our local league here, MPFL, that can always do a good job. But now, the thing is, people complain about players not playing their team, being invited. I agree, 100%. The technical committee, uh, uh, comprising of Alan, who is the chairman, Victor Ekweba, Dr. Felix Olabi, Zana, just to mention a few, you know, uh, Balili and all of that. We agreed. We made a proposal to Nigerian Football Federation leadership that based on this criteria, that is how we're going to be inviting players. You must be regular in your team. You must have a certain percentage of, of, of games you must have played before now, before international games anyway. Not a big share. The thing is, um, these games are just coming. Three, four days in between, interval, we have to play a game. And I came into this 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 uh, position as, as a coach now. First game was against um, Benin. I was out there in Belgium, you know, went to take care of a few things. And we were uh, almost at the verge of employing a foreign coach. The deal didn't go through. Not our own fault. They are fault there. And then again, the second person again, it didn't go through. We were ready, but their own fault as well. And I was called upon. So coming back home, uh, I was still going to come anyway because I've got the job to do here. With the permission of the Federation, that's why I traveled. And first game was played. Four days later, second game. In between this other game and the next one, there is no window for any friendly. And then Rwanda game. And then Libya game home, Libya game away, which didn't take place. Again, another three, four days. I shot left that this one now. And then we're playing again you know, Monday here in you. Big check. I have to stick with the players that I know. I have to stick with players that I have worked with before now. Because we cannot bring in somebody who I have not worked with before. Who we're not so sure it can fit into the way we want to play. Yeah. Yes, we have a list of players out there that we're looking at to give a chance or an opportunity. But right now, the time is not there. The, the, the earliest FIFA window that we have for friendly, we will do. It could have happened in this game. Now they have qualified. But it's going to cost us a fortune to start bringing players from out there now, okay, this set go back and the other set comes in, I won't qualify. That's going to be a huge amount of money. So I am saying Nigeria should please be patient. We know all of this. We will give a chance to every Nigerian playing anywhere in this world an opportunity because we want the best. We really want the best. But when that chance comes for a window for a friendly game, yes, we can tweak things around and bring five, bring four, bring three, however the case may be. But right now, we, 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 we have a game plan. It's like a puzzle we're trying to put together here. 
they bring somebody new, completely new, has never been here before, or somebody who doesn't know how we operate, and then fit in within three, four days. It's tough. Now, Gabriel Shaw came in. Ajayi is, is out because injured. A short trained only once. And he played. I told him from the beginning before he flew in that he was going to play. But based on his performance before now, I've been watching him, I knew he has to be guided on how we play. You know, but he's a very good player. Very satisfied with 45 minutes he played for us in Cote d'Ivoire. But he was substituted. Why? Not because he didn't play well. Because we have to revert back to a back four for a reason, for us to now have numbers going forward to try to get something back from the game. Mm. So it's, it's, it's a matter of patience. Nigeria should be patient. We would definitely put a very good team together because it's an open thing for everybody. Okay, this is from me now. That's the question. You have worked with several generations of super eagles, several generations. So you know the super eagles well, well from even before your time, yeah. your time, and after, and so on and so forth. And now we have the present set of Super Ego. How strong is that team? How strong is this team, really? You, you know, because at the end of the day, um, we, we watch them play. We watch them play. We watch them play against Benet. Good players, but how strong is this team? Me, I, you know, I, at the end of the day, I can't really place it, truly. Me, I, I did really good. Good look, Ola, you know, for me, is one of the best fullbacks in the world. Demola Lukman is a fantastic ball carrier and winger from that side. Osime, deadly. If he has the chance, you know, he may not play well during the game and so on, but give him a few chances and he will bam. The guy has caught up with me now in Go Style itself. You this all you you went and coached him to catch up with me. I will, I will see what I will do to you anyway. That's my goal, Tali. We don't do for so many decades. Now, I don't defeat them. Anyway, but that, but that how strong is that now. team? But I'm happy. So now, that now your prayer now. <laughs> yes, prayer now. I'm well. very happy now. Congratulations. Congratulations. Exactly, it just shows that we have people up front now who can deliver the goods, which is fantastic. Anyway, yes. but how, how strong True. in your own estimation? You know, Nigerians are listening to you. How strong is this team, yes. really? Because we are going into another season. The World Cup season will soon start. We start to build up hope and anticipation and oh. expectation and all of that. How strong is this team now? This team is very strong, Big Shake. Good. The only thing is um, we have not had time together for... for I think the, the, the highest or number of days we've stayed is only four days, three days. Hmm. On this Côte d'Ivoire uh, one now, mm. they, 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 we arrived Côte d'Ivoire on a Sunday and most of the boys came, only five came on a Monday morning and the other ones came on a Tuesday evening and we had to play on a Thursday. So this team is very, to answer your question, this mm. team is very strong. But we have to find time now to see how we can uh, train longer together and 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 put things together and make sure we give we get the desired result. Now you're talking about World Cup coming right in our face. Yes, we know that. Our own strategy uh, is it's to approach every game, every single game, like a World Cup final. We might not play too beautifully, but the points matters at some point in time, which we are trying to put together. After qualification, there will be time to to tweak the team around. There'll be time for friendly games. There'll be time for errors. Right now, if we can make minimum error or minimal error, accepted. If we don't make any error, it's also accepted. Like you mentioned, Alain, yes, for me, he's one of the best fullbacks in the world. That is why uh, uh, the coach keep calling me every day to say, please, we need him back. We're playing Arsenal <laughs> next game. We need him back. Mm -hmm. We're playing Arsenal next game. So, okay, we'll see what we'll do about that. Don't uh, worry. Let us get this results first. We'll send. If it means putting a private jet to go back, we'll do that. Big check. This team is strong. It's not about Nigeria alone. You, you can see that football worldwide, the standard has dropped a little bit. Um, most countries today struggle. 
because of generational thing. Your generation, which I adore, that watched life as a ball pouring some games, the Christian Chukus, later to Ibu and all that. And then after that, I watched Keshi's generation a little bit before I joined Keshi. Let Keshi rest in peace. And after another generation, look at Maradona generation, not until Messi came, but Argentina always struggled, but they are there, they're always there. But Brazil is struggling right now. I think it's a generational thing. It's not just affecting Nigeria alone, but I think I can beat my chest with time. This thing will make Nigeria proud. Okay. Um, we'll be going on a short break, just short break, just to take a few messages. But I want to prepare your mind for my next question. Um, because you became interim coach of the Super Eagles. And you are supposed to pick your assistants, people who will compliment you. And you were going through a tough time already at that time. You were going through a tough time, you know. And then you needed coaches with a lot of experience to come and compliment what you were doing, to be able to take the team to a higher level. And then you select two coaches in the domestic league that have little or no international experience at that level. And so some people were wondering the rationale for doing that. So why did you select two coaches from the domestic league for that purpose? When we come back from the break, this is Eagle 7 Sports Radio, 103.7 FM, reaching you from Wasimi, 90 minutes with mathematical. I have... On with me, Austin Eguavon Cerezo. After the break. It's time to join forces as the Defense Headquarters and the Organization for Military Sports in Africa, OSMA, presents the second All-Africa Military Games taking place in Abuja from the 18th to the 30th of November 2024 with over 42 African countries in participation and featuring male and female military personnel taking part in various sporting activities like football, athletics, tennis, judo, and much more. Be part of this great sporting event as Abuja gets ready to play host to the very best of Africa's military sports persons this November in Abuja. Visit www.amga2024.com and avail yourself the opportunity to win various prizes as the second All-Africa Military Games gets underway from the 18th to the 30th of November at the Mashoud Abula Stadium. Admission is free! The Africa Military Games, enhancing African military cooperation through sports. Introducing Sinewi Eat and Chill, Abilkata's newest culinary destination. Savour the flavor. Indulge in our mouth-watering dishes. Amala, jollof rice, fried rice, fresh vegetables, and many more. Services include catering for events and parties, 24-7 delivery, takeout, dining. Our location is number one, Odunjo Crescent, Panseke Abelkuta, Ogun State. Call us or WhatsApp 0706-0682-788. Let's make your event unforgettable. Picnics, cooking services, general catering, we've got you covered. Fast delivery guaranteed. Follow us on all social media to stay updated at Scenery Eat and Chill on all platforms. Scenery Eat and Chill for your mouth-watering delicious dishes. Hi, my name is uh, Mr. Austin Owen Aguavon, Technical Director and Director of Federation. Keep listening to Eagle 7 Sports Radio, 103.7 FM. Welcome back. My guest is Austin Aguavon and uh, he's here to x-ray the super egos for us to answer your questions so you can call us anytime from now from on 0700 1037 but austin why your two coaches from the domestic league a uh, big shed uh, you know when i was given this opportunity to come back and handle these games a short notice anyway and um I was given a chance also to pick assistants. And when you look at the league, you know, locally, um, Remo has been champion before and then followed by Ranger. I looked at it very well. 
And um, the choice of these two guys came to my mind. I have watched Remo play a number of times. It's a team. You see, when I go to watch league games, I don't just look at um, where the ball is. I look at structure of the team in possession, out of possession, attacking, defending, transition, the way individual operates and the way the entire team operates and the way lines operate. When I say lines, defense line, midfield line, and forward line. I see a team with structure playing in Remo stars. I remember um, just before this one, the Super Six in Lagos. I've watched Remo in Remo. I've watched Remo in Benin. I've watched Remo somewhere else. And in that Super Six, I called the coach. I saw, saw someone to call him for me. As at that time, we were not talking about national team now. I shook hands with him. I said to him, you have future. I like the way your team plays. And that was it. So when this chance, opportunity came, I told him to get him for me. President asked me, is that what you want? I said, yes. And then I also follow Ilechuku when he was in MFM, successful. And then they went into then continent they went with a small budget, successful. They went to Plateau, successful. They went to Rangers, successful. He was in Heartland for a very short time. I don't know what happened there. So when I looked at this criteria, I have many coaches in my mind. Even Monday of the year was very successful with Ben Insurance about two years ago and last year. Got promoted, got insurance promoted. I had all these people in my mind, you know, just to mention a few. But I had a decision to make. So technical committee led by Three, Alan one, and of yeah. course Gabe and Kobe. When they asked me, I said, no, this, this is my choice based on what we have on ground right now. Um, and I pleaded with the Federation also that we need somebody who also is vast in, in um, as, a, as a, a physical trainer. I haven't worked in Slovenia before now. I actually went to my club in Belgium to please give me a physical trainer who will complement what we are trying to do. Mm. But the information or request was a little bit too late, so they couldn't. I haven't worked in Slovenia for a short time, like about four years ago. I remember we had a young man in the name Thomas. So he clicked. I called him. He was available. Although he's still with the under 21 of the Slovenian national team, I enjoyed the way he worked. And I told the leader, she just said, bring him in. And then that's how he came. So you have myself, you have Ile Chuku, you have Ugumo Dede, and you have uh, the physical trainer, uh, Thomas. So that's where we are right now. Because we were successful in the league, that informed my decision or our decision to bring them in. Although we made some individual errors, it was glary. It's not a problem. It's something we'll address today. And they all agree. Some individual errors. But then, in that, in that, in that game, sir, yeah, against the run of play, we considered a goal. If you remember, we played with a back three, which is 3-4-3. Three, three. Mm. And then we considered that goal. Beginning of second half, we reverted back to a back four. That was why I said it earlier. Remove this young man, who did well. Um, the center back, so we now reverted back to back four, a four three three. And around 20 minutes before the end of the game, 15 minutes to go, we haven't still scored. We had to now remove it will be who came into the game, but a bit late. He was doing his thing, but we needed to revert back to now a four four two. That was when we brought. Um, Boniface in to pay with the semen. We could need, need numbers there. And in one game, we played about three different systems. And because we're not having numbers in the box, more numbers in the box, Victor Moses did, um, yeah, sorry, um, Moses Simon did his thing. And then to God be the glory, we scored. I think it's just about, about reading the game mm -hmm. and trying to change at every given time what system that will work. Well, you know, you have provided the answer. That's how God worked his miracle. And, exactly. Uh, and then, you know, that header, beautiful header. In our days, we couldn't head that way. You know, the ball is coming from the left side of attack. You are in the, you are at the near post and you still head the ball to go to the far post. Very difficult heading technique. So that was fantastic by Osime. Anyway, 
what has been your greatest challenge? Apart from that, you don't have time, which is, of course, your greatest challenge. That's your greatest challenge. That you don't have time to actually coach these boys and, you know, get them to start to, to become a team and so on. What, outside of time, would be your greatest challenge handling these super egos now? Um, it's a little bit difficult to say, Dick. It's just time. Because right now, I'm so occupied with so many things. And, um, it, it, timing, timing. Occupied with so many things. When I say occupied with so many things, you know, the calendar is so choked that when the boys comes in, same thing, a few days before a game, and they go back. That is why we're trying to see now how we can increase the, increase the pool of players that we have. Mm -hmm. So if one, two are not available, we have somebody to, to just, you know, bring in. I think the biggest challenge is still that time, Big Chef. It's okay. time. But now you have another responsibility. Is that right? That you are also the coach of Chan, the Chan Eagles or something. You have something to do with Chan Eagles. What is it? What is it? Exactly. You and no. Chan. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'm just going to supervise. Okay. Because I'm busy, or I will be busy, seriously, in the office. I have files now to treat as soon as I get back to Abuja. And um, capable hands, I'll always be around. Uh, I was there in the first and second phase of trying to put the team together that we face Ghana in December. I'm always going to be around to just give my advice. And once in a while, I'll jump into the field. But I take responsibility because I'm head of the crew. So it's still the same crew that is moving up there. So to say now I'm withdrawing completely, that will not be nice. It's not correct. Responsibility is still mine. But I think I will um, allow these, these coaches, managers are moving. So it's, it's exactly the same entire backroom staff that will move. So it's going to be um, a tough one, but I think it's something we can, we can achieve. This chant thing is a problem for me. Our teams have not been doing well in Africa. Our local teams have not been winning in Africa. And people expect you still. That they are not winning in Africa means that there's something, you know, about our local football and our local footballers, you know, if they were good enough, oh, they would be winning in Africa. But that they are not winning, even without looking at the matches, is an indication that you know, probably we are not, we don't have the clubs that can win or we don't have the players that can win. What is your own impression about our local players and the local teams, why we are not winning, why we don't have them playing even in the Super Eagles now from the local league? That whole, you know, ecosystem. What do you think? Big Shake, uh one has been invited now from a center back left footed player. It's going to be a player for the future. So, looking at various ways we can get, in, get involved in the international team, main super egos. But to answer this question, I think we, we have, we have, yeah, we're not done with the continent club wise. Last chance, we also had a little problem. That is why the, the management this time around said try to put this team early enough together which we have done. First phase, second phase. Now we have the picture in our mind on how many players will come in beginning of December to face our opponent in Ghana uh, towards Christmas period, to look at game anyway. But this time we will, we will qualify and we'll do very well at, at, at the tournament proper. Yes, we have to be patient, Big Shed. Why did I say this? Nigerians will love the game so much, but sometimes we're not patient. And I would like taking the permission from you now that, that we have to be in, on the table by, we start by nine breakfast mm. and everybody have to be there seated. If you're not there, you get fined. I have to leave by example. That's why I'm going to be very brief now before I go. And then team meetings also. In fact, we have, we, we have a structure. We have everything outlined. You have to be there at least 10, 15 minutes before we, we, we commence everything we're, we're trying to do. And again, Earlier in the program, I said, I don't monitor people. I give people freedom, but with responsibility. So you are responsible for your own action. So if you're not there now, five minutes to nine, 
It's your responsibility. You pay the fine. There is no negotiation. <laughs> but we are a little bit flexible on some things, on some things. Um, I don't sleep. I make sure everything is in order before I go to sleep. Like we played against the last game against Bennett. Team meetings, um, press conference, the day of the game, time flies. So it's about we sticking to our plan. We come out with a program. Everybody is, is reminded we have a platform. If there's any complaint, just drop a message and you know, it'll be attended to. So discipline level has to be very, very high. Otherwise, it will be a problem. And collectively, we have a rule. So after this camp or any camp, then you can go do your thing. But there are rules and regulations guiding us here as we are uh, as a family. Again, it's a big sacrifice, you know, to lock some people somewhere for that no, those number of days and restricted from different things. It has to do with sacrifice, dedication, and discipline. Hmm. Fantastic. Last question so that we let you go. We don't let you, you know, lose anything. Um, yes, sir. Just speak to Nigerians now. Just speak to Nigerians, you know, because you, you are at the helm of affairs. You carry the fate of this country in your hands through the super egos. It is a huge responsibility and then you need Nigerians to understand and be with you, but also speak with them reassuringly and just go ahead. Speak your mind before you go. Yes, thank you again one more time. So I, I want to really appreciate our people, Nigerians, both at home and diaspora. Although uh, sometimes out of emotions, people can say something they don't really mean because because of the love they have for the country and the love they have for the game. And I have to also, you know, I would say, because of what football has given to me, uh, gave me fame, and um, with Tango today, I'm sad of this responsibility. And I owe Nigeria uh, a, a duty. I owe Nigeria as a payback thing also. And uh, people should just try, try to be supportive of which they are, uh, you know, we have to stick together at good times and bad times. We are all pulling the same string towards the same direction, towards the same objective. And slowly, slowly, we're making progress. I know sometimes the game is not so smooth. Yeah, there will be comments and agitation. We understand that. The boys understand that. The Federation understand that. But please, let us stick together. And it doesn't have to be just because of me or all other individuals. It's about Nigeria. We have we have to do everything possible collectively. We've enjoyed their support so far. They should please try to continue to support. Yes, mistakes are there to be made, which is normal. It's, it's part of life. But to realize that mistake and fix it real quick is what matters. And that's exactly what we're trying to do. So collectively, Nigerians should please support Nigerian Football Federation, support the Super Ego, support the under-20, support sports generally you know and then uh, at the end of the day uh, god will do his own thing and we will we will we, we excel in this our, on this our field so once again thank you to nigerians please like i said before emotions run through a lot of persons we can understand that we can understand that but support nigeria support the super egos on behalf of all of us that are listening to you around the world Nigerians and all fans of the Super Eagles. I say congratulations. We say thank you for your service to the game. Thank you to your service to the country. We wish you the best. Salute all the players for us. Tell them we are with them 100%. We are with them 100%. And if possible, we shall come to you to come and, you know, just at least add our voice to the celebrations that sure. will happen on Monday. Sure. Serezo, thank you very much. Now you, thank you very much. I appreciate we'll talk later, sir. Okay, now you can go. God bless you, sir. You can go. God bless Amen. You. God bless you. you too. So, that's about all we are going to be taking on today's show. From Monday, the African military games would start in Abuja. And it is going to be the biggest sporting event on the continent of Africa this year uh it is the african military olympics 
as a matter of fact. And all the countries are coming in to Abuja as we speak. And I shall be in Abuja um, to go and see what is going on, record the sounds and sights, and meet with certain people. And um, our reporters will also be there. They will be bringing you um, all the, the reports and the behind the scenes, everything that is going on there, which I'll be bringing you on Eagle 7 Sports Radio. So, so just watch out from Monday. On top of that, I'll be having a daily diary. A daily diary. You know, that is becoming very popular these days, where every day I put down my encounters you know, the people I meet, the places I go to, the events I attend, and my opinions on what's going on around. So that would be in a daily diary that I shall share with our global audience every day on Eagle 7 Sports Radio. And of course, I shall also script that daily diary and it shall be available on all my regular social media platforms. So if you like to read, then join me every day from Monday when I will be in Abuja to bring you all the juices from the second African military games. So that's it from me and from us here at the studio. Have a great weekend and join me again next week Saturday when we bring you 90 Minutes with Mathematical. Bye for now. <laughs>